Welcome to Go After Dark. Go After Dark is not a series where we discuss error handling or generics. Instead, we code some nice real-time effects. In this episode, we'll create another classic effect, usually referred to as a tongue effect. Again, we're looking at an effect that has been the basis of a lot of variations. But today, we'll try to get an understanding of the very basics. And in a future episode, we can expand on this and try to work out some different variations of it. So let's get into the code. So it's the first thing, let's try to run it and see how it looks. So yeah, this uh, looks like a, a 3D tunnel. We are looking down the tunnel and let's try to work out how um, that can be done. So the first thing we do is we load our texture. This is the same thing as we did in the previous episodes. Then we get to something new. What we are doing is for every pixel that we want to output, we create a lookup table. So that enables us to have a lookup table the same size as our screen. What this means is that we can simply look up for every pixel where on the texture we want to read it. If we do that, we get a static picture like this, where nothing is really happening. So what we are then able to do is also simply move the texture around. In reality, we don't move the texture, but instead we simply change the offset we are reading from. That allows us to animate the texture and create an effect where it seems like we're moving in and out and rotating in the, um, in the tunnel. So let's look at how we're doing that. If we go down to where we create the, uh, the offsets, we uh, range over the height and the width of the image. So we use the X and Y coordinates to figure out when the screen we currently are drawing. And from that, we figure out what is the distance to the center of the screen and what is the angle uh, of the screen the pixel is placed at. We use that to generate the texture coordinates we want to use. And we simply store that in our lookup table for our current pixel. The texture coordinates are in fixed point. Uh, so they have actually greater precision than the size of our image. Since we are storing our values in 32-bit integers, we use 16 bits to represent every coordinate. You may wonder why we're using more bits than we actually have to. To illustrate that, I've uh, made it easy to configure. So now we only use nine bits per coordinate. And if we run the function, this is the effect with nine bits per pixel. As you might be able to tell, it's now really choppy and it's not able to have the fine movement we would like it to have. If we change it back, We can now see that uh, when we are back to 16 bits per, per pixel, we have much smoother animation. So let's take a look at the rendering loop. The first thing we do is we calculate the difference between the 16-bit texture coordinates and the actual size of the texture. This enables us to directly transform the 16-bit texture coordinates into real coordinates. The next thing we store is the size of a single pixel in texture space. We create masks that uh, enables us to quickly wrap around the texture. And finally, we create texture space offsets. This is what allows us to scroll the texture. So we use the incoming time t to calculate some 
nice values of the u and v u is the uh, the depth so uh, how much is it scrolling in and out v is the rotation so so that's also something we offset every frame finally we get to the actual rendering loop we range over the image top to bottom left to right every line we fetch our lookup table for every pixel we simply look up the value in our lookup table we add the offsets to the U and V coordinates. We neutralize the extra position and we mask it out to be sure we don't have anything left over. Finally, we do a lookup in our texture and write that to the output pixel. So as you can see, there's actually very, very little going on in the rendering loop. We are simply adding few numbers and creating a single lookup per pixel, which makes this an extremely fast effect. So this is actually how you create a tunnel effect. When you take out the math, the actual rendering is quite simple. And as you probably can see, this is also very versatile. So it can represent a lot of other things than a simple tunnel. As a final thing, I'd like to show you another scene from Second Reality. The reason I want to show this is that it is also basically just another tunnel effect. So as you can see, there's a lot of things we can actually use this for. But with that said, thank you for watching the fourth episode of Go After Dark. I still haven't completely decided what the next episode will be. But until then, you can visit afterdark.classbus.com and see the effect in the browser or find links to the source code. Be sure to subscribe and enable notifications here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Twitter to get notified when new episodes are out. Feel free to share your creations on Twitter with the hashtag GoAfterDark. But thank you for your time and good night. <laughs>